please welcome to the show R&B powerhouse, Leela James. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having so many spots in my playlist of life. Oh, thank you. It is just amazing to have you. And I know you have so many interesting stories, but it's the story of the mother, the woman, the performer, the artist that I know our viewers will love to connect with. Yes. Tell I'm all of those. Oh, you are. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You are doing it. Tell me just about your start, though, in mm. music. I started, um, actually, I was signed back in 2000. And my first project didn't come out, though, until 2005. They ah, had okay. me on the shelf. And so I actually didn't even think wow. the project was going to come out. Um, because it took so long. They didn't know how to market me. They didn't know what at that what time. What did that mean? And what did that well, I didn't look like anybody I that knew was out that at that, that time. And I wasn't trying to look like anyone. At but that you time. were committed to being your authentic self. Yeah. We are used to big natural hair before it was a thing and a hashtag right. from you. So, yeah. hey, thank you for that. Thank you. How did you move through that space, though? Was there ever a time when you <sighs> felt, were you getting a lot of pressure to change your look? Absolutely. Um, I I just always knew that who I was was not de determined by someone else. Mm -hmm. I, I I felt comfortable in my skin from day one, and I wasn't going to let the industry change me and in any way, shape, or form. So if I wanted to wear my hair nappy and happy, that's what I was going to do. Nappy and, and happy. And they just going to have to deal with it. So, so how did you get the uh, music industry then to accept this is who this is how I sound and this is how I look while I'm doing it? Um, I just put out music, good music, mm -hmm. and hopefully, I mean, it's been accepted, but if I can't, you know, it, you either like it or you don't. Right. But I just, um, again, always wanted to just do me and not try mm -hmm. to fit into any type of format or be boxed in, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think that's the true definition of really, really self-love and being free. Absolutely. I love that. And so many people, um, especially when we first started hearing your voice, you gave us Etta James vibes. Yeah. <laughs> you loved that compliment. Absolutely. She, uh, Etta James was a, a, a very um, strong singer and a strong woman mm -hmm. during her time. And it's with that strong time. voice that we've come yeah, to know from it's you. a very strong voice. And, you know, she stood her own, too. She mm -hmm. stood in her own. And I feel like it's so important as a as female artist to stand 10 toes in whatever it is. You yes, do, indeed. Um, and, and be confident in that. And so to be spoken of in the same sentence uh, of a great artist like her, or even likened to her as far as, you know, they call me Betty, little, you know, Etta James. Um, that was a compliment at the time because mm -hmm. I was uh, much younger and they was like, Ooh, you sound like a, a young version of that and mm -hmm. this big voice. So um, I took all that as a compliment. And what was it like when James Brown described you as the goddaughter of soul? Well, um, for me, tell me about that. How did that even come to be and how, when you heard it? Yeah, well, we were on tour. I had the um, opportunity to open up for him overseas. And so that was a great way for me to really, really learn, um, mm. the game of performing and just watching an icon like him at the time. It was like, he was uh, 70 something, yeah. I would imagine, um, at that time and still, you know, performing, as if he was probably in his 20s yeah, and 30s. Yeah, still singing so it was and dancing. Amazing. Yeah. And I learned so much. And then to be able to, um, you know, have him speak to me and speak into my artistry at that time and say, hey, you know, oh, we want to continue this soul thing. And I'm, he's passing on the torch. Mm. I was, I was, at that time, I was satisfied with, oh, that's all. I don't need anything else yeah. in the industry. Okay, I've <laughs> exactly. been, you know, crowned, so to speak, by was one of the greatest. Was there any particular words of wisdom that he shared with you that have carried you through your career? Yeah, I, I do recall seeing him on stage and... One night he was just, just, if you love soul, you got to keep, keep the soul alive. And he kept saying mm. that and keep it alive. And so I always try in my own way to, um, make sure that I don't forget that in my own music, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you are the soul. And, and so that will never die. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You surely keep it alive in the honor of our ancestors, Etta and James Brown. Yes. Let's talk about, though, the evolution of your career, because before, in the beginning, no kids. You are singing. You can tour. You can be <laughs> all over. With you. yeah. James Brown, when he be someplace you're going, it's different now. It's very different And the now. staying power of an artist and the balancing of a mother 
Let's talk about that. Your it's, children it's, are how old? Uh, are you? I have a 12 year old, a daughter, and a seven year old son. It's mm. extremely challenging. Um, I don't think there is, as I was telling you earlier, there's no balance in this. Like, you mm. try to find it. When they are happy, I'm most happy. Right. And when they're not happy, of course, I'm not in the best. But I do my best to make sure that everything that I do, I make sure that they know it's for them. It's for them. Your advice, quickly, for women who are in the same situation. They're maybe not singing on tour, <laughs> but they're they're busy and they're trying to manage. Because I think it's just so candid for you to say there isn't really balance. It's yeah. the selection. Of what's I think it's okay today. to not be okay. Mm. I think it's okay to say, um, I can't do this today, but if I'm living to see another day, I can try tomorrow. Mm. So I think you got to take care of yourself. Um, we all want to be super women and super woman and, you know, tr get everything done. Today I did it. I did it. it. I got uh, all of my checklist. Yeah. Nah. Nah, sometimes you got to shut down. Sometimes you got to take a nap because um, one thing that I am learning is something my mother is teaching me. Um, she was like, you know, if you're not here, then what? Who's taking care of him now? So some time still. for you is still yes, something that you try to carve out. Yes, yes. Good. And so that's when it's okay to not be okay and say no. Just mm. say no. No is a complete sentence. Yes. I, it took me a minute to realize that. Yes. But it really is. Yes. And do what you can. That's all. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to do everything. Do what you can as yeah. best as you can. God's going to take care of the rest. Yes. Just flow. Mm.